can help but take the first few moments and uh, give praise and thanks to Almighty God for everything He's done, not just for me, but for us, because as we know that um, when God brings a new priest into the church, it is for His church. It's not for me, it's for them. It's for everybody. For you and your priesthood is for me. And all this time that I've been with you, I've relied on you. And it is a very much, it's very different now to know that though many are going to rely on me. But today we are, so uh, what we hear in from St. Paul and from the Gospels is really about this. And one of the reasons I wanted to talk about what's going on you know, with, with St. Paul, he's reminding us about how immense the love and mercy of God is. And we can understand from what he's teaching that it is from this understanding that we, that we, um, that we understand that it's on our knees that we go to God to ask for forgiveness, that we go to God to ask for the things we need, asking him to give us that which he intends for us. And you know, even in my own conversations, the few I've had between yesterday and today, and I, that came out in one of the conversations, and I said, you know, because so many people have known me, they, all these years, you know, and that's really one of the um, responses I get, you know, well, all these years your dreams have come true. And all of us know it's more than that. That can be, you know, somewhat true. But in taking that, I realized, you know, all this time requires our persistence. God has insisted. We persist. And even as we are now, as old Romans, we can be alone. It can be very lonely. It can be, it can be as lonely as listening. But Holy Mass, the sacrifices, is for them, is for the world. They don't realize everything that's going on when Holy Mass is said, when a proper Holy Mass is said. And for me, this is what St. Paul's reminding us of, the length and the breadth and the width and the depth and the greatness of the mercy and the love of God. And then, when we move into the Gospel, it's really quite an amazing story. It's what we've all heard, where our Lord cures the man with dropsy. But, if you know a little bit about the history, about antiquity, about what's going on, remember, our Lord's been invited where the Pharisees are, where they're, they're, and they're watching him. Because remember, Holy Scripture says they're watching him. And they, our Lord did not invite this man with dropsy in. They invited him, these Pharisees, because they wanted to see what he was going to do. Because why? It's the Sabbath. But not, not even this man went to our Lord and said, you know, would you heal me, please? I, I look at all this suffering. He didn't even. And in some of the commentaries that I read up on, uh, you know, really, we can kind of read in there that why did this man, who's obviously an intelligent man, but someone who suffered, he's with the Pharisees, maybe say he was probably a Pharisee. Why would he not ask? Why would he not prop himself up the way he knew that they were wishing to prop him up? to test this man, this Nazarene, who they were wondering, what, who is he? Why is he here? He's causing all these miracles. We want to know who you are, because of course we know later, they're asking, are you the Messiah? And the great thing, one thing about, again, about our Lord's mercy, is that the man with drops, he doesn't ask. The Pharisees don't present them, and in the malice of their heart, they're watching our Lord. But our Lord immediately sees his suffering, immediately, and goes to him and heals his hand with dropsy. And, I, and even this morning as I was reflecting on it, I thought, well, that he must have been a very faithful, loving man, this man with dropsy. A man who persisted. A man who continued to pray despite roadblocks, despite what people were saying. Because, you know, when you have dropsy, you know, anytime, even up to today, people right away, they think, oh, something's wrong with you. Or <clears throat> you did something that God you know, was punishing you. But more so even, even at that time. So that man probably suffered a lot. And so I thought, what does our Lord always say, especially in the Gospel of Luke, when he heals? It's your faith that healed you. And we know that. So this man must have been a man of great faith. Because he, our Lord simply healed him. And you know, we can, we can 
ruminate about what may have happened afterwards and what they were doing, what they asked, what, what was their response. You know, and then what did our Lord say? He's teaching them. And again, he's there with these people who don't even, really you don't even want them around because they want to test him. They're trying to catch him. And then he just points out their pride, their hidden pride. Men, you're not men of persistence. You're men of desire, men of, that you want. Sit back and receive the mercy of God. Because that's what I realized. And I said, you know, am I not the man who drops it all these years? And I think that you all can ask the same thing. Are you not the man who drops it? And you have received the mercy of our Lord. But even in your own lives, you can say, that mercy, you went to him, knowing you needed his help, knowing you need to ask, not because it was a, a task to ask him, but because you asked him out of love, which was the melting away of the pride, the humility. And when that's gone, then he can heal. Then we can receive his mercy. And then the Father will the Son A ti 